This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is a review of a pencil. It's not just any pencil, though. It's Apple's $99 pencil for the iPad Pro. That's their new outsized, oversized, super big iPad 12.9 inch display, and the first one to support an active digitizer with a precise digital pen. Something Steve Jobs once said, ah, that's a stupid idea, but well, they're on board now with the idea, and there are many uses for this. Note-taking, drafting, uh, sketching out your ideas, all that sort of thing. So we're going to check it out now. When we first did our iPad Pro review, we didn't yet have the Elusive Pencil, which is a very hard-to-get pencil. It still is hard to get. You're going to have to hunt one down or have some patience and wait for Apple to ship you one. But anyway, we're going to see how it does for drawing, note-taking. We'll compare it with Surface Pro 4 a little bit, too, and even with a Cube i7 stylus, which is a very affordable import Chinese tablets with a Wacom Active Digitizer. We're going to look at it now. Okie dokie. So we have here one lovely, shiny, slippery white Apple pencil. It is very slippery. I, I guess Apple went with form over function here because they decided to make it glossy white, which is very pretty, matches their chargers and all that sort of thing. It would have been nicer if they did it in an aluminum finish that matched the iPad, for example, because that would be more grippy. This is the slickest thing I have ever held. It's also pretty long. It's about as long as an unsharpened brand new pencil out of the box. No quite so surprising there. So, you know, it used to be some digital pens were too small, and like the, the Samsung Galaxy S Note pen, for example, is still pretty small because it actually stows away in the body. Unlike this, you're going to carry this around and do your best to not lose it. Uh, but most of the ones that, that are available for PCs, they're not tiny. This is an old tablet PC Wacom pen right here, one that I really like as an eraser on the end. No eraser on the Apple pen. And you can see it's considerably smaller, and it's actually a little easier to hold. This is a lot of weight. It's not the end of the world, but there's a lot of weight bouncing off on the end there. So I'm not sure why Apple made it so big. I think they were doing a little going to town with skeuomorphism and really trying to make this look like a brand new pencil out of the box. Here we have the Surface Pro 4 and Surface Book Pen, the latest generation with the eraser again on the end right there. A little bit thicker, that feels good. This is a little bit narrow. It's not the end of the world. I do have long fingers. I prefer a little bit fatter. Nice texture, so you're just not going to drop in. One side's a little bit flattened even, so that's not a bad idea. It's not just for the magnet that attaches it to the Surface Pro or Surface Book. It, it gives you a little bit of holding there. And lastly, if you're into Wacom and the EMR digitizers, which are pretty prevalent in a lot of tablet PCs and stuff, there are all sorts of pens that Wacom themselves makes. This one has a really nice kind of, makes a raspy sound almost when you run your hand over it. Pen comes off, pen cover like that to protect it if you want. A little fat again, very comfortable, very grippy. So there you get the, the idea of the comparison of the pen. Now this is not ergonomically terrible. It just could be improved if they went less for pretty and more for functional. Shorten it up, make it more grippy, and maybe a little bit fatter, that would be pretty nice. The first thing you're going to lose, and I'm always careful with my pens and my toys and you know these guys, I don't lose them, but this. <laughs> this is the lightning port connector right here. This is how you're going to pair it and then charge it on your iPad, which isn't such a bad idea, right? You know, it's pretty easy. You just charge it pretty quickly on there and pairing it up is as simple as sticking it in. Although the iPad does look sort of like, I don't know what, a cow with a tail or something like that. I'm not going to make any rude jokes. You know what else I'm thinking about? Sticking it up its port, you know. <clears throat> so you just stick it in right there to charge it up. And of course, since it's lightning, it's reversible. Either way is up and it takes a little firm press. So you know, I'm not going to pick that on that as much as some people, even though there, I do worry about breaking the pen off when it's like that, because big tablet, big pen sticking out, you get the idea. But it's pretty quick, and it's a pretty brilliant way of making pairing pretty quick and easy. But in case you just despise the thought of having a tail on your tablet while it's charging, you do have to stick it in there once just to pair it. They get a little, get a little adapter in the box here, and here's what you get. You open up the box, pretty as ever, sort of like an Apple Watch box. The pen goes in that section right there. Be sure to look in here. It's not just instructions that you'll probably choose to ignore. In here, we have a little adapter. It's a female-to-female -female lightning adapter, so you can plug this into the iPad's charger if you would prefer to charge the pen that way. And there's a replacement nib, which is the nice correct word for the pen tip, the little rubbery tip that's there. And I'm sure Apple will sell more of those should you wear them down. They usually don't wear them that quickly, so it's not like in a month you're going to need a new one, but maybe every six months if you use it pretty heavily. That would be my guessment based on other digital pens that are out there.
And by the way, if you're wondering what holds this little cap on, it is magnetic. So it kind of yanks it on there. It's not going to come off by accident. It takes quite a bit of work to try to get it off. Now, first thing, notice the pen tip here, or pencil, right? It does look like a pencil. You have this kind of bevel going on a gradation. That speaks of awesomeness, total awesomeness, and I was excited to experience the shading. That's really something that's very different on this pen versus the Wacom and the Entrick digitizers, and of course the Synaptics, they're kind of the last man on the totem pole there being the weakest of the solutions, and they've improved. Anyway, very natural feeling, and I'll demo that. So you compare that, here's a tip on a Wacom pen, and I have a custom tip on here for a nice rougher kind of grip on glass feel. And if we take one of the Entrig pens, again, the same thing. It's a very pointy little nib that you can barely see. There's the, the, the barrel over here is just the barrel of the pen. It's not a functional tip. Like this whole section is actually the active tip of the pen right there. So that gives you a hint about something special when it comes to tilt support when you're drawing. Now, for those of you who paint a lot, you know, Angling the brush can be useful, especially if you're using a fan brush, but I think mostly it's going to be for people who are charcoal and pencil sketchers who are really going to like that. Even when you're using a pen, right, an ink pen, it, tilt isn't as important. So it's going to be pastels, charcoals, pencils, where that really starts to shine. All right, now it's time to test the pen out with a few apps. You can use it just like a regular old digital pointer. You can tap to launch stuff and all that. You're not spending $100 to have a pointer, though, are you, for an OS that's totally optimized for finger use. So we're going to check out a few applications. First point to make, and you probably know this already, but just in case you don't, this runs iOS, just like other iPads and the iPhone. That means you get some pretty cool mobile apps, but you don't get Adobe Photoshop CS6 or CC. You don't get Painter 2016, full Adobe Illustrator. Adobe's mobile products are just not all that. They are not the bee's knees, sorry to say. So for those of you who need to use those products, you're doing this whether recreationally or professionally, but you're used to working with those products, or you have deliverables that need to be in those formats, just keep that in mind. For those of you who are digital photographers, as you know I am, there's no Lightroom here. Again, there's no Photoshop. So if you're doing things like using raw format, pulling levels, doing sophisticated HDR, not the one-click HDR that really makes everything look posterized. I don't find this the best tool for editing photographs as a result, because I need all of that other stuff that Photoshop and Lightroom do. Now, this is great, certainly if you're touching up a photograph and you want to carefully highlight and delete something precisely, but the whole rest of the package just isn't there. What this is great for is for just brainstorming, for sketching, for doing diagrams, for for artwork, for your, your first run at sketches, you can, you can get a lot done here and then save it in something like JPEG and pick it up later. Programs like Procreate we're going to look at actually support layers. So it's not like you can't do nothing with this thing at all. And in fact, we're going to just look at the Notes app because here's a note that I started. Now, this is awesome for people who don't already know how to use these complicated tools. You don't know how to use Manga Studio 5. You don't know how to do snap to guides to make yourself a straight line. This is very intuitive, isn't it? Here's my ruler. If I want to make a straight line, I draw along the edge. I can even use it for shading, like you can see I did there. I just drew a line. I can just draw a line. So I switched to the pencil tool to do the shading. If you use the pen tool, you're not going to get that. This is a pencil feature right here. So now I'll move my ruler and see there it is. Any angle you want to rotate it. So if you're if you're diagramming and you can't draw a straight line to save your life, if you need to do some cheater perspective angles to help you with the drawing, it really works well. So this is a very friendly tool. And this is just Apple's actual notes application. And you've got your pen, you've got your marker, you've got your pencil, you've got your ruler, and you've got your eraser. If you want to erase something, you will tap on the eraser tool and erase it. There is no eraser on the end of the pencil like a certain surface pen that we looked at recently. So that's easy enough. You can also draw and take notes here if you want to. I have terrible handwriting. There it is. There is nothing, there, there is no ink to text recognition going on here. So this is just for scribbling your notes. It does have palm rejection. It works about as well as Surface Pro for palm rejection or a Wacom tablet. I am resting my hand on the glass right now. Notice there's no hover dot, something that both Wacom and Entrig do on Windows tablet PCs. There's no indication of where my 
pen tip is. Parallax, which is the offset of the pen tip to the glass, so you think you're here but you're really slightly over there kind of thing. The little hover tip helps with dealing with that issue. That said, the parallax is pretty minor on this. Again, it's, a, it's about like Surface Pro 4, so I don't find, say I'm trying to outline, I'm going to outline this guy's face that I was working on over here, and I'm just slightly off from the original line. It's pretty close, so that's not bad at all. The speed, the latency, is very good. Again, it's it's equal to Wacom and Entrig digitizers that are currently available, so that's pretty impressive. That means you can draw it really quickly and go to town. Now, I have to say that this is really a very... If, if you're used to pencil sketching like I am, this is just really pleasant. I, I just started drawing much like I would in pen and paper, something that I very rarely feel quite like I can do with other solutions. So for those of you who are particularly pencil or pastel sketch artists, you're going to like the feel of this pen. It, it captures the feel of a pencil like nothing else. Noise, it's a kind of soft rubbery tip, so it's not super duper loud. Let's compare that just to let me use the surface pen even quieter, because they worked really hard on that. Apparently people were complaining they wanted it to be quieter, so this is even quieter. Of course, notice it doesn't work. No Entrig pens will work here, no Wacom pens will work here. This is Apple's own solution. If you want to do this, you need Apple's pen. It's not open to third parties, as far as I know. Unlike the keyboard accessory for iPad Pros, that is open to third parties to make. Now we're in Procreate, which is the best sort of natural media drawing application that, that you can get for iOS. And this is a like $6.99 or $5.99, I don't remember which. It's pretty affordable. So look at how nicely I'm doing my side shading again. I'm going to focus on it a lot because that's really what's unique here. Pressure sensitivity, again, about similar to Surface Pro and many of the Wacom solutions. I really should be using a different color here to do that shading, but that's okay. So with more pressure, I'm getting my my shading in here. Uh, Procreate is pretty easy to jump into. The most mystifying thing is where are your tools? So, you know, once you learn that, that's pretty easy. So you've got your adjustments here. We have a little bit of Photoshop sort of stuff going on here. You got layers, Gaussian blur, motion blur, perspective blur, saturation, color balance. It's pretty neat stuff. Your actions over here. And if you tap on that, you can see I'm using a shading graphite right now. And let's switch to inking because I know some of you want to see how that goes. So we're going to go with a studio pen. And as you might expect, it's very, well, digital pen like. It's pretty precise. There's a little bit of ink lag here going on. It's funny, they do a lot better with the brushes than with the ink in Procreate. And that's something, of course, that they can address and fix because this is a brand new product. So there you go. It makes a pretty nice inky line. The pressure curve is a little odd on this. When I press hard, it's not doing much different from when I press light, but you can see sometimes I can get a kind of nice fat line. Now you can play with your pressure curves and stuff like that, but they need to do a little work on the inking part. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you can just get it and sometimes you just can't. I don't feel like I have control over that so much. But with the pencil tools and the regular brushes, I, it's, it's much better. So let's switch over to a, a rounded brush. And that's a pretty light wash, so let's change our color. And now for some trying with oil brushes. Here we go. There's a, it's a little more open opaque than I expected given the settings here, but you get fairly natural brush strokes. Because these are wide and because it has to interpolate and well basically do fake strokes, you can see a little delay before it fills it in there while it thinks about it some, but it's pretty nice looking stuff. So you can do some really very attractive artwork here as we totally turn our apple painting into something surreal here. So it's a pretty enjoyable tool. Again, programs are going to have to tweak themselves a little bit to get this working as well as it could. But one thing to note is that you don't have to install special drivers to the pen or anything like that. So every application potentially has support for the pen. They, they can tweak how, how their application reacts to it, but, but overall pretty much any, most any drawing and painting program should work. So how about you note takers? We're going to take a look at OneNote next and see how it works there. So here is a note that I was doing handwritten. And right now I'm in the fill tool because I was drawing a little coffee mug right there. And you get the idea. One note works really pretty well, so that is that's not bad 
at all. In terms of handwriting, again, works well, works very well. And you got, you know, with the iPad, with the Pro version for iPad here, you've got stylus, you've got, actually got undo, yay, isn't that nice compared to the iPhone version? Bunch of different pencils you can choose from and stuff like that. I mean, it's not an art tool, but for taking notes, this is just perfectly fine. So let's switch back to our regular old pen, drop down our ink size, you can't get too big on this. Works pretty well. You hear some clicking on the glass, but you can see it keeps up quite well. I was resting my hand on the glass the entire time. So it does a good job there. And if Evernote's more your thing, well, here we are in Evernote. And you know, they have a couple of pen here. Not much in the way of stuff, but ink lags a little bit more here. But I think it actually makes prettier looking kind of like a little bit more inky looking than it would be otherwise and you've got your highlighter function sort of thing there you can make a total mess of this and an eraser and the the cut tool so Evernote it supports the pen it works fine too as a just your basic note-taking tool if you want handwritten notes it's gets the job done again you're not always going to get you know ink to text kind of thing here like you would with a Windows tablet PC but Yes, the job done. And then we're going to compare it to Surface Pro 4 for a little bit so you can see how that works in comparison. So now here we are in Corel Painter. Just so you can get the idea, we're using a soft charcoal pencil right now. In terms of the speed and the latency, that works fine too. Not much going on here in the world of tilt. Entrig just doesn't really do too much with tilt so far. And honestly, PC applications don't support it so well either. But it's very quick. Uh, palm rejection is about equal. Latency is really close on the two of these. The thing with the Surface Pro is you're going to have a choice of a whole lot of professional applications. We got Photoshop CC in here. I could show you that too, but I think you all know how that works by now with pens. It works quite well. The brushes aren't as great for natural media as they are with Painter, but some people don't actually need that. We have Mischief, we have Clip, Clip Studio Paint on here. And we'll launch Mischief so you can see. We have an inking tool right now, obviously. Give the guy an ear, a little bit of an ear right there. So. Occasionally you see a little bit of latency there, but it's doing a stylized kind of ink, a really pretty, sumi kind of ink. So really with the Surface Pro, you're, you're getting similar latency, you're getting good brush tracking, you do get the little hover dot here, so it helps you with the parallax. You're getting similar parallax, actually, which is to say quite good. P works right out to the edges of the screen, so it's more like what you need in the way of applications. If you need to use Photoshop, if you need to use Manga or Clip Studio, Paint, Illustrator, those sort of things, then it's going to be Surface Pro 4 for you. If you just want to paint, brainstorm, take notes, that sort of thing, the iPad Pro can do the job just fine. And lastly, just to show you what a, a Wacom EMR traditional digitizer is like that's in a lot of tablet PCs. This is the Q by 7 stylus. This is a fairly cheap Chinese import 10 inch tablet. It sells for around 400 bucks from importers. Anyway, we have Art Rage going this time and I'm on the pencil tool right now and just so you can see the speed. Now this is running on a Core M so it's not necessarily the fastest knife in the drawer but it's doing okay too. But the point is in terms of tip accuracy, in terms of tracking speed, they're all pretty similar. So whether you're using this for notes or whether you're using it for the art, they're, uh, the iPad, the Surface Pro 4 or something with Wacom inside is going to be about the same unless you're looking at the professional $2,000 Cintiqs of course and then that's a whole nother cup of tea right there. But just so you can see what it's like, it's pretty much the same, isn't it? So there you have it, the Apple Pencil. Not only is it the most expensive digital pen accessory we've seen so far for a tablet, it's also the best out of the box for a first generation product. When Entrig first started hitting tablet PCs like 10 years ago, it was kind of sketchy there, no pun intended. Okay, kind of intended. And then when Synaptics came out with their solution, well, that was just a total disaster. And it took them about a year and a half just to get it kind of working right. So Apple, out of the gate, got something that works really very nicely and is competitive with both Wacom and Entrig pens, which is no simple feat. 
Now, the challenge as ever is going to be whether the mobile apps that are available on iOS are enough to do the job for you. I think as you've seen, if you just want to sketch, you just want to draw, you're not doing this professionally, you don't have deliverables that need to be in a certain format, that sort of thing, it's easy. If you, don't, if you can deal with the cloud transferring of files because there's no, you know, traditional file system on this thing, it can work well. So if you're just brainstorming on the couch, if you're drawing diagrams, if you're doing notes to self, if you just want to sketch and have fun, if you want to take notes, it actually works pretty well. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to watch our iPad Pro video review, read our written review, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.